334 together in our hymnal. 334, still sweeter every day. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. Let's all stand together as we sing 334 together on that first. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. He's fairer than the glory of the golden purple dawn. He's all my fancy pictures in his fairest dreams and more. Each day he grows so sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancied. singing tonight. Good to see you in church on Sunday evening. Had a good service this morning and uh, glad you're back for more tonight and uh, got off to a good start. We got some good things planned tonight. We're going to hear from the ladies, by the way, who went on the ladies retreat and uh, hear what the Lord did in their heart. So we'll look forward to that and uh, we'll have a good service together this evening. Let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for another opportunity for us to gather together thank you for each one that's made their way back to church on Sunday evening Lord we do pray for those who are unable to be with us tonight because of illness Lord I pray that you put your healing hand upon their body raise them up to be back with us Lord in the services Lord we pray now that you'll meet with us tonight uh, Lord you know what we need on this Sunday evening on March 15th 2015 and I pray God that our hearts would be open and you'd give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say to his church tonight. Bless the music, our fellowship together, the testimonies of the ladies, and the preaching of your word. May it all be done for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 355, would you join me in turning in your hymnals, Wonderful Grace of Jesus, 355. On that first together. Oh, wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus, reaches. Oh, the master's grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Wonderful grace, all sufficient for me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise him. grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty for the wonderful grace of Jesus. Oh, the master's grace of Jesus, 
him gone, dear child, purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity and the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the master's grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. In all my sin and shame, oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise His name. All right, boy, that's good singing. And a couple announcements now for us. Regular schedule as far as this week goes. Back here Wednesday night for our Bible study on Wednesday evening and the uh, Patch the Pirate Clubs that meet during that time. And uh, we'll be continuing our Bible studies on prayer on Wednesday night. And so be here for that. Uh, Thursday night for Are You Inside down at the prison at CRC. Friday night, Reformers Unanimous here at 7 o'clock. Uh, Saturday, uh, our bus visitation and soul winning 10 a.m. here in the auditorium and right now Saturday looks beautiful and uh, sunny at about 58 degrees and it's going to be nice so uh, come on out and let's get the word out and uh, we'll invite folks to the cantata uh, for Easter and uh, tell them about Jesus amen so we'll have a good time together on Saturday doing that and uh, let's see Saturday also I think is Emily's open house isn't it not for graduation uh, from two to seven does that sound right and uh, that's out at the Morton's Place, and uh, you're welcome to come to that, okay? Also, ladies, remember your ladies' night out a week from tomorrow night, and uh, the sign-up sheet is down there, and just follow the instructions, and uh, so you can get the sub of your choice, okay? And uh, you get to kind of build it yourself, mark the appropriate boxes, and uh, you'll get the right things on your sandwich that night, okay? And uh, you'll have a good time uh, together. That's on March 23rd on Monday evening, okay? All right, that's what I have right now for our announcements, and uh, take a minute and welcome any guests we have with us tonight. It's a young man back here and his wife, his uh, brother Quitter, and uh, his wife, they are with uh, Baptist Missions to Forgotten People. And uh, he is like a uh, field representative. He helps the missionaries who are on deputation and also the ones even on the field if they have any issues with government issues and different things like that. He's there to help them out. And uh, they were with us. I, he would look familiar to me. And uh, I, they, back, what did you say, around Thanksgiving, possibly? In 2013, okay? And uh, so it was good to have them back traveling through. They've, as uh, he's told me, this is the first time they've been back through Ohio. And uh, it's beautiful this time of year. And uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to have been here a month ago, but it's, uh, it, it's great to see you tonight. Thanks for stopping in and visiting with us. It's good to see you again. All right. Let's take a minute. We'll hear from our choir.
413 in your hymnal, 413, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but love lifted me, 413 together. We're going to sing that first and last together on that first. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. despairing cry from the water lifted me now safe am I love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me some of the ladies. We got a couple ladies out there, I think, that aren't up here. Mrs. Linderman needs to come up, and uh, Mrs. Slaybaugh back there needs to come up. I know she doesn't have much of a voice, but you come on up. At least you don't have to walk up alone, Cynthia. You got someone walking up with you. How about that? There you go. Anybody else? Is that is that cover, ladies, or the ones who are here? Yeah. That look right? Good. All right. And um, the good news is you just short and sweet and to the point we want to it was a great conference and um they heard good good reports from the ladies that have uh, come back it was at mansfield baptist temple up in mansfield and a uh, great great meeting there and so we're going to hear from the ladies what the lord spoke to their heart about and uh just go down the line just jump run, run right after another okay and uh just just share what the lord did in your heart this week all right okay I just want to say it was a wonderful, wonderful conference. Um, everything that they did was just first class, but the spirit was just amazing of all the ladies that are there that were serving and helping. Um, they had several workshops. They had three main sessions. Um, um, the theme was closed, clothed in beauty, and then there were several workshops like joy in trials, um, joy in the single life, joy in... Um, getting things organized in your life. Um, just so many helpful, helpful things. It was amazing. And um, there were two wonderful speakers. One was a missionary, Susan Smith. And um, she was with Claim Ministries. Um, but she had just a wonderful testimony. And going through a trial herself, her husband um, being diagnosed with cancer just recently. Um, but she was amazing. We just all loved her. Her spirit was so sweet. Handouts and all the things that we needed to... Um, take home with us and study and go back over. I just want to encourage any lady that was not able to come to really begin to plan on coming next year. It is just a quality ladies meeting. It's not fluff. It's word of God is just shared. The scripture is there. It's an encouragement. It's, it's a wonderful time. And beyond that, we ladies had just a fantastic time in our hotel rooms. We got together and just had a sweet time of fellowship. And I'll let them tell you about that. It was great. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank God for allowing me to be able to go and for Kathy organizing it and letting us go. And with me being a new member at this church, it was great to get to know Jeanette Anderson. We have a lot in common. <laughs> so <laughs> um, 
It was an awesome time. Um, I am going to be that person on your back that's going to beg you to go next year because I already told Miss Kathy that God put it in my heart. It revives us as women. It revives us as mothers, as wives, as Christians. And just one night away, it, I can't tell you the difference that I feel from that conference because they speak to us as women. There's 350 women that were there. So it's amazing. Um, I... What really touched me is that they had a teen group, so the teens got to go with their teen area, and the last one was the mother and daughter talk, so I was the mother of three because I was the only mom there. Um, but one of the important things as mothers is that we need to shut our mouth before we speak. <laughs> so I do encourage everybody to go next year. So I'm going to be that person. So come to the ladies' meeting on the 23rd because I'm going to give you more information then. I was her roommate. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't sleep much because <laughs> I'm a jabber. So it, it was awesome. It was like a shot of the Lord. You know, when you go and get your kids shots, this was a shot of the Lord, it was it was very uplifting and juvenile. I just I loved it. Um, had a great time. Uh, the speakers were great, and I I really what stuck out to me is what if you know don't ever say what if what if I didn't do this what if I didn't do that because everything happens for a reason and there's no what ifs what you know what if I never married my husband or. You know, there's no thinking like that. And to always have joy, no matter what, in your sorrows, whatever trials you're going through, always have joy. Find joy in it. Find laughter. Laughter is healing to the soul. <laughs> I was glad that I was able to go. Um, I haven't been to a ladies' retreat in a really long time. And the nice thing about it, too, is my daughter was able to go with me, and that was the first time that her and I have ever been on a retreat together. And we had a really good time, and she enjoyed it. And um, like the ladies were saying, it was so spiritual. It really was, and everything was very well planned. Everything was very well organized. And we just, I don't know, I just really had a good time. I was glad I went. And Jeanette is really <laughs> something. <laughs> mentioned the um, speakers they really spoke to our hearts there was the fun and they had skits that went on usually before and laughter is good for the soul um, each of the speakers it seemed like kept bringing in the theme of trials focusing on that and then as we each would meet in the individual sessions they had ladies from their own church who led the individual sessions and it was amazing as these women just everyday women like us and they recounted their life stories, the different things that God had brought them through. And it was so encouraging to hear their stories of how God had done miraculous things. And at the same point, to know that these were ladies who've been in the everyday trenches just like we are. And yet, you would never know by their countenance some of the things that they had gone through because they had determined that regardless of the outcome, they were going to find joy. Amen. And that was such an encouragement for me. And also, the whole theme they called it was bling <laughs> and as far as ladies for being the light where we are sometimes we get in our mold as one speaker so aptly put it that our whole focus is our home which is great as ladies but the fact that we can't forget about the world behind us and we can take our home and use that as a ministry whether it's in the kitchen cooking to reach other people or taking those to the sick or even bringing others into her home. Like, it was great when they worked on, there was a session called It's Life's Party. <laughs> and it was just about preparing your home to be always ready for those who your husband might surprise you or just someone that God places upon you to, in, to your home Amen. and to use your home as a ministry because there is a world behind us. So it was encouraging. Yeah. I was glad I got to go. It was a lot of fun. Um, 
<laughs> the hotel was interesting. <laughs> I'm bringing headphones next time. <laughs> um, the, ser the sermons were really good. Uh, Miss Smith was my favorite speaker. She, she had just, you could tell she had God with her. She was just awesome. <laughs> then she had like the goofy side. So <laughs> she, but yeah. And then the teens sessions and stuff was interesting. Uh, you had like four sessions, like two with just the teen girls. And then the last one was with the moms. And of course I had new mom <laughs> for that one. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we all gathered back and stuff, and so I'm really looking forward to going next year. Well, I liked it a lot. I wish, hopefully, that I get to go next year. Well, the main thing for me was to be who I am. Like, I don't really know how to talk for a whole lot of people. But, um, the teen classes were mostly about being, um, about modest and a whole bunch of to be, keep your heart for Um, God and stuff. Well, hopefully I get to go next year. Well, um, <laughs> um, I enjoyed the retreat. It was my first time going, and uh, I really had fun with the girls and Nikki. Um, it was a crazy room. Other than that, uh, I liked the sermons. It was really touching, and <coughs> it was great. And our teen sessions was really good. The one that stuck out to me was a purity one on how to keep your heart whole and 100% ready for your husband and only for him. And um, I really liked that, so it was fun. Well, it was a blessing to be able to go, and, and I uh, thank God for the traveling mercies and, and the fellowship. Um, you just really don't get to know ladies just by coming to church, you know, and it, it's, I really encourage you to, to come on the retreats, come to the ladies' meetings, and, you know, be with the ladies when they're relaxed, you know. But as far as the retreat was concerned, um, it, it, was, it was a very spiritual retreat, not not that any of the other ones weren't, but this one just was at a high level. Um, like one of the young ladies said, the the main speaker was you could you could just tell that God was with her. And um, one of the other questions that you know we shouldn't ask is why you know why why does God give us trials? Because those are those are fiery furnaces where where God takes off the dross in our lives and um, so we don't ask why but then at the same time through those trials we choose to have joy Amen. and so that others the, the lost in the world can can see how we handle trial how we handle uh, the difficult things in life that you know it rains on the just and the unjust so um, we show them um, the power of God through how we choose joy through those trials. And um, the other thing that was such a blessing was that um, the ladies in, in the separate sessions, they, they were giving their testimonies, and they, were, they had experienced miracles in their lives. I mean, miracles. We, we look in the Bible and we, we read about those things and we just feel like they're so far from us. But we were looking 
at people who had experienced miracles. And, and I wish I could just tell you everything, you know, but I, I, I can't. Um, and I, I think that we feel like they're so far from us, they can't happen in our lives. But if we just let go of trying to do things ourselves and let God do them in us, then we can see those same miracles. So. <clears throat> Very good. Well, let's uh, stand and uh, turn in our hymnals to number 56, number 5, 6, the old rugged cross. Let's stand one more time, if you would. On that first together on a hill far away, on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear let's sing that last together when we get to the chorus hopefully you'll be seated by that time or at your place anyway and we're going to sing that without the instruments all right on that last together to the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach then he'll call someday to my home far away where his glory for ever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my troll 
exchange it someday for a crown. All right, you may be seated. Good singing tonight. And ushers will come and be ready to receive our offering for this evening. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on our offering tonight. Brother Danny Wright, lead us in our prayer, please. Father, we love you and we're just uh, grateful for another opportunity to come uh, to church, Father, and just... Um, I love my church, Father, and each person in this uh, church is, 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 is unique, and I'm, I'm glad that the ladies had a great time, and Father, each one of us have a testimony, and Father, it's just amazing how you work in each one of our lives, Father. I just pray that we can continue growing in our knowledge and understanding of who you are, and a, one way to do that is, is through prayer, Father. And um, I just uh, love the messages that we've heard uh, on prayer. And uh, it's an awesome way to build a personal, intimate, real relationship with you. It's a way to connect with you, Father. It's, uh, Father, when we pray, you just don't listen to our words, but you, you listen to our hearts, Father. And, and we love you, and you're amazing, and I'm excited to do to see what you'll do in this service. And I ask uh, that you be with the pastor as he opens up uh, the Bible and, and teaches us more about our Savior. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Take your Bibles this evening, if you would, please, for our scripture reading to Titus chapter 2, please, Titus chapter 2. Titus 2, we're going to be reading verses 7 through 15. <clears throat> verses 7 through 15 of Titus chapter 2. We'll read the verses responsibly as we normally do, beginning together on verse 7 and alternating uh, until we end together on verse 15 of Titus chapter 2. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture this evening. All of us standing to read God's word and let's begin together on verse 7 of Titus chapter 2. Ready? In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, 
We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture tonight. And we thank you, Lord, for again for the opportunity to look into your word together. Lord, thank you for the wonderful music this evening and uh, the, the truths and the doctrine that we find in these songs that we've sung tonight. Lord, thank you for the testimonies from the ladies and what you did in their heart uh, over the retreat there in Mansfield. Thank you for uh, the Mansfield Baptist Temple and for the ministry of the ladies there. Others behind the scenes that did a lot of setup and a lot of work. Lord, I'm sure there's some tired people there in that church this evening. We pray that you would bless them, Lord, and may our ladies express gratitude to them for what you did through them in their hearts and lives this weekend. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity now to once again look into your word together. Speak to our hearts as you so many times in the past have done. As we open up your word on a Sunday evening, help us to focus. Lord, help us to, to not wander away in our mind and miss what you have for us tonight. Give, help us to give you our undivided attention me as I bring the message and help each person as they listen. May your will be accomplished in these next few moments. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Titus chapter 2, right in verse number 7. I want you to notice that as Paul writes to Titus here, who again is one of his preacher boys, so to speak. He's training him for the ministry. And as he writes to Titus, he says, In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. I want you to circle that little word, showing. Showing a pattern of good works. Notice, he says, I'm, We're to be showing a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Verse number 10, Not purloining, but showing all good fidelity. We're to be showing a pattern of good works. We're to be showing uncorruptness in doctrine. We're to be showing all good fidelity. And showing means this, to exhibit or present to the view of others. Did you hear that? It means to exhibit or present to the view of others. Showing. And that means there needs to be something visible about my Christianity. All right? We're to adorn, as verse number 10 tells us, we're to adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. That word adorn means to display the beauty and excellence. We're to display the beauty and excellence of the doctrine of God in all things. That's visible. Somebody says, Well, I'm saved. But the truth of the matter is, no one ever would have guessed it in a million years if you hadn't have said so. Because there's nothing visible to tell them otherwise. I want you to just ask yourself the question tonight in a heart-searching way, is there a difference between me and a lost person? Is there a difference between me and someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ at all? In my apparel, in my associations, in my entertainment, in my music, in my speech. You see, as we live out our faith in Christ, as we live out the doctrine of God, there is a verbal message to be sure, but there's also a visible message. And as we give the gospel, we're to adorn the gospel that we believe. Adorning is for others to see. Adorning is 
for others to be able to notice. It's to make it appealing. It's to make it attractive. When you go to verse 11, you have a negative and a positive. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Verse 12, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. There's the negative. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Here's the positive. That we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. When? In this present world. Not in the world to come, but in this present world. Now, I just want to give us four simple lessons from this passage this evening. Four good reminders that will help us to adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. I believe we have a day when the lines between what a Christian is and what a non-Christian is, the lines are being blurred. And we can't tell the difference. And uh, there are some, if they don't verbally say something, you would never know they're a believer. We know from different uh, surveys that have been taken by different groups that they find little difference between the entertainment of those who say they know Christ and those who say they don't know Christ. Little difference in associations. We live in that day when the lines are being rubbed out. We, uh, I was sad in the last, oh, was it a week or two, that uh, to see that Tennessee Temple Schools is closing. Tennessee Temple Schools for years was, it was founded by Dr. Lee Robertson. And it hadn't been uh, what Lee Robertson founded it to be the last several years. They, I think, are uh, uh, merging with a college further south, if I remember right. But his motto for 40 years when he led that institution was, it's distinctively Christian. Distinctively Christian. In other words, you ought to be able to tell that this is a Christian university. And there are universities out there in this day and age when you go on campus, you would not know that you're on a Christian university. That's not what the Bible says we should be doing. We're to be adorning the doctrine of God our Savior. Now notice four, four lessons. Number one is this. We're to show fidelity. We are to show fidelity. Did you see that in verse 10? Not purloining. That simply is, is not uh, plagiarizing, not, not cheating. Okay, And talking about servants, who employees, if you will, who are working for their employers. But showing all good fidelity. Fidelity is simply faithfulness. And we're to show that. Where to make that visible. The context is in my relationship with God and my relationship with the will of God. The, the key ingredient there is faithfulness. In other words, faithfulness to God and faithfulness to the will of God is supposed to be a very visible thing in my life. That should, not, that should never come into doubt whether I am faithful to God and to the will of God. And, and by the way, that's why I know I'm talking to the Sunday night crowd. Uh, but that's why you're in church on Sunday night. That's why you didn't say, well, it is Selection Sunday, and I better stay home and watch where the brackets go. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, but some in the room will know what that means. And, and you understand, there's, there's always things that come about, and what it, what it does is by coming to church on Sunday night, you're stating, you're making it visible of your faithfulness to God and the will of God. Why? It's not His will that we forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And listen, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't you not come to church on a Sunday night and be critical of churches who don't even have Sunday night service because you would feel right at home there. All right? So don't, don't criticize folks who don't have a midweek service if you don't come to midweek service. Uh, be faithful. Let your faithfulness be visible. Let it be known. It ought to be something that's an adornment that others see. In Acts 4, what, what did they do with the apostles? It says they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. There had to be something obvious, something outward, something visible that they knew that those men had been with Jesus Christ. They could tell it was visible. The standard of faithfulness. Oh, let's get back to faithfulness again. Man, if we're going to... Listen, God isn't concerned about success. God is concerned about faithfulness. 
And if you're faithful, you'll be successful in the eyes of God. That's why he requires in stewards that a man be found faithful. Be faithful to be in your Bible every day. Be faithful to go to prayer every day. Be faithful to tell someone about Christ every day. Be faithful to carry the gospel with you. Be faithful to take the opportunities God gives you. Hey, be faithful to be separated to Him and from the world. Be faithful to, to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Be faithful to church. Be faithful to the things of God. That is a testimony. And so don't let up on your faithful. And faithfulness adorns, it, it, it decorates the doctrine of God. It decorates the gospel. Listen, if it, I don't, it's not attractive to someone if they don't see that you're faithful to it and you're not committed to it. Then why should they be? We're to show all fidelity. Number two, we're to show righteousness. Verse number 12, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And, and, and I'll submit to you, if we don't deny the ungodliness and the worldly lust, we'll never live soberly, righteously, and godly. It's, it's like Psalm 1. If you, if you don't refuse to walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, you'll never delight in the law of the Lord. If you're going to delight in the law of the Lord, if you're going to have the positive of verse 2, you've got to have the negative of verse 1. And if you don't have the negative of the first part of verse 12, of denying ungodliness and worldly lust, then you're never going to live soberly righteous and godly. It'll never happen. All right, so you have to have the negative than the positive. And, and the, again, adorning the doctrine with righteousness is what a wife does as she adorns herself for her husband, making herself more attractive to her husband. We, make, uh, we, we adorn our home to make it more attractive or more homey or more inviting. And so we adorn the doctrine of what we believe. We adorn the doctrine of what we believe. When we do, we make it more attractive to people who are looking for a change in their life. Make it more attractive for people who know that there's something more to life than what they're living. Now, righteousness is simply this. Doing what God says is right. Doing what God says is right. That's righteousness. Doing what God says is right adorns the gospel message. How many of you ever heard somebody say there's hypocrites at church? Huh? Sure. And by the way, they're right. Okay? We don't, we don't hide that fact. But, but, but the truth is, they, they get that ammunition from people who say they're Christians, but they're not doing what God says is right to do. And so it confuses people saying, man, I don't understand this. That's, that's not, it, I don't think that's what God says is right. Why are you doing that? And, and so they're not adorning righteousness and showing righteousness. People are not who or what they profess to be. And, and again, I don't think that's a reason to stay away from church. It's an excuse for sure, but it's not a reason. The grace of God that saves me, and that's what it's talking about here, verse 11. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Some who want to take the grace of God and they want it to be that you can do anything you want, live any way you want, look any way you want, and, and be anything you want because we're under grace. Okay? And, and, and listen, but here the Bible makes it clear the grace of God, that, that favor of God, that sufficiency of God teaches us something. And you know what it teaches us? It teaches us that we deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. If God has been that gracious to me, if God has been that good to me, if God has been that wonderful to me, then how can I have a friendship with the world? How can I dabble in that which nailed Him to the cross? We said this morning in Sunday school, remember about the rabbi who the, one of his followers came to him to tell him how much he loved him? And the rabbi looked up, remember, and he said, do you know what hurts me? And the man got a little upset, his follower, and said, Here I am trying to express my devotion to you and my love to you, and you ask me irrelevant questions. And the rabbi said, It's not irrelevant at all, because if you do not know what hurts me, how can you really love me? My friend.
friend, if you don't know what hurts God, what grieves his heart, then how can you really say you love him? Listen, friendship with the world is enmity with God. And God, listen, God says, I, I get, <laughs> it's interesting, the Lord says, I get in Revelation, he says, the ones I, that make me sick are not the ones who are cold and not the ones who are hot. He said, it's the ones that are lukewarm. That they, oh, it's not the ones who never show up at church. It's the ones who do, and then they live the whole week like they never went to church. And when you say you go to church, people look at you like, you go to church? And they can't hardly believe it. Righteousness. Adorning the gospel is not just inward, but it's outward. It's visible. And I say what's on the inside should be visible on the outside. And if the grace of God has done a work in your heart and brought about salvation, that will be visible at some point on the outside. Adorning the gospel is not just me being saved, but it's my conducting my life to honor the gospel that has saved me. Did you get that? Adorning the gospel is not just me being saved, but me conducting my life to honor the gospel that has saved me. Now, if the heart's right and the outside is wrong, that's still wrong. And by the way, if the heart's wrong and the outside's right, that's wrong. But what's wrong with having the heart right and the outside right? That is possible, you know. And that is what the Lord wants. And God expects both. Philippians chapter 2. Would you turn there for a moment, please? Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2, we're talking about adorning the gospel. We're talking about showing righteousness. Wherefore, verse number 12 of Philippians 2, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, he didn't say work for your salvation. He says work out your salvation. In other words, it's already been put in there. You're going to work it out, but how do you, is it you working it out? No, what's the next verse say? It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. It's God that's at work in you, making you, listen, not just helping you to do what He should do, what we should do as believers, but He gives you the want to. That's what the will is. Both the will and to do of His good pleasure. The very fact that, listen, Unless, unless you're a child here tonight and your mom and dad looked at you and said, you're going to church, you came of your own free will. What made you want to come to church on Sunday night? I'll tell you what that verse says. It was God. If you wanted to be here, that was God. He gave you that desire to be in the house of God. Any time that you have a desire to want to please God or do something that the Word of God says we ought to do, that desire came from God. He both wills and to do of His good pleasure. And it comes from Him. And so my heart can be right and the outside can be right too. Remember that day sitting in the car with Danny Wright. He was dressed about like he's dressed now. Had on a coat and a tie and we had gone out visiting. And uh, I remember somebody was in the nursing home. It might have been Jim Stilton. I'm not sure. It was at the Columbus Health Care. And, and I remember Danny. It was one of the first times he ever went out soul winning. And I remember he was, he was passing out to everybody. He'd give tracks to everybody he saw. Uh, people walking down the hallway, nurses, uh, orderlies, anybody. He was just giving them the gospel, giving everybody a track. And we come back to church, and we're sitting in the car talking a little bit. And I said, Danny, I said, you know, everything about you reminds me of your new life in Christ. Remember that morning? We sat out there. I said, man, you got a shirt on, tie on. I said, it's haircut, man. I said, there's just one thing that still reminds me of your old life. He said, what's that? I said, that right there. He still had an earring in his ear. You know what he did? He reached up and ripped that thing. I wanted to say, ah! That would hurt. Really, he ripped it out and said, you'll never see that again. 
and we've never seen it again, have we? Amen. Huh? Why? He wants. He wanted the outside to match what was in his heart, to match what was on the inside, and that's the way it's supposed to be. The 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 visible message along with the verbal message, it goes together. It goes together. So we're to show all good fidelity. We're supposed to show righteousness. Let me give you lesson number three. This is important to know. Spirituality is not imitation. Spirituality is not imitation. I read something this week. Somebody said, we used to sing, Oh, uh, to be like thee. Talk about, Oh, to be like Christ. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. This is my prayer to be like him. And now we sing to be like other Christians, to be like other Christians. That's my prayer, to be like them. No, 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 no. You're not, you're not trying to be like somebody else, and you're not trying to imitate Christ. What we said earlier, listen, it is, it is allowing Christ to live through me. It is dying to myself. It's not me trying hard to act like Jesus, because I'll fail. And so will you. The arm of flesh will fail you. Paul said, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth what? No good thing. Anthony, get a seat. Okay, you're good. And stay put. All right? Every time you move, everybody watches you move. Okay? So put your stuff down. Look right up here and give me your attention. All right? So we're, we're learning that Christ, listen, by faith... The Bible teaches us Christ takes up residence in our heart when we get saved. Now the idea is that He's to be seen and He's to guide our mind, our will, our emotions. And we're to be under His control. And we do that by yielding to the Spirit of God. That's why Paul could say, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. See, Christ living in me. I'm letting Him live through me. So it's not me doing the work. It's Christ doing the work. That's why we can do His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. You know when they're hard? When you're trying to do the work. And you're doing it in your own strength. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Romans chapter 12. Familiar verses to us. Romans chapter 12. Most of you know this these verses become very familiar to you. But I want you to look at them. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, verses 1 and 2, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed. That means poured into the mold of this world. We're not going to be poured into the mold of the world. Listen to me. That means the world ought to think you're a little strange. They, the people you work with will think you're a little bit off-center, okay? And that's okay. By the way, they, they, they thought the, when, when Paul was before Agrippa, what did Agrippa say to Paul? You're crazy. Much learning doth make thee mad. You're nuts, man. Because Paul said, man, I wish you were like I am, except for the bonds. And, and Agrippa couldn't fathom that. So you, you'd be in good company. They even said Jesus was crazy. So we're not poured into the world, but we're transformed. We're metamorphosized. We're, we're, uh, that, that same metamorphosis where we get our word from that. By the renewing of our mind, we can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we find out that this idea of spirituality is not just conforming. We're not just being poured into a mold. We're being transformed. And that begins by the renewing of our mind. It begins with changing the way we think. And, and the way we think is is the, the past thinking is always try harder. Do better. Man, I keep messing up. What are you going to do? I'm going to try harder. Well, I keep, I keep sinning again. What am I going to do to keep from that besetting sin? Well, I just got to do better. You see? No, 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 no. That's not the answer. You're, you're just trying to conform. You're just trying to, 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 to get poured into a mold. No, you have to be transformed. Begin if you, don't, if you try to live the Christian life without being transformed, you become a performer. What you're doing is you're putting on a show for everybody. And that's why when the rubber meets the road with those you live with inside the house during the week, it all falls apart. 
it all falls apart. Can I tell on you, Bill? Do I have permission? Huh? Bill is a different man. I uh, was listening to his wife the other day. She made the comment that when she first got married to Bill, in fact, Lindy, not, not Lindy, uh, Desiree elaborated on it for us today a little bit at lunch, that it wasn't long after they had uh, blended their families together there that uh, her and her Bill, her and her dad, had a disagreement and a discussion. But it wasn't just a discussion. It was a loud discussion that they were yelling at one another. And it was a great surprise to Lindy. They had not had any yelling in the house. When I asked, Lynn, when I asked Desiree today, say, tell me about your dad. And, and I said, do you have a temper? Oh, yeah. You get angry. Oh, yeah. Now, I can't believe that. That's not the bill we know. Huh? Just as easy going to get. Now, listen, a couple things happened. Number one, Bill got saved. He'd been, he'd been years performing. And, and probably at church, everybody thought, oh, he's a great guy. But people who he lived with knew better. But guess what? He got saved. And when he got saved, and then he began to allow God to work in his life, he's become a different guy. Guess what? Now he doesn't yell at people anymore. I don't think. And, uh, I mean, this, his family will testify to that. He's, and and, and my, nobody's saying he's perfect, but he's changed. You see what I mean? And, and that happens when you begin to yield your life to Christ and you begin to change your thinking. It's just what somebody said tonight with the ladies. You have to realize joy is, the, the definition of the joy is when you have a calm delight in all the circumstances of life. What does that mean? You, you remain calm no matter what the circumstance because God's in control of my circumstances. I, and by the way, that's a little better than just when, when people say, even lost people say, everything happens for a reason. And it does. But I kind of like it when we say, God's in control of my circumstances. God's in control of my life. Because he is. David said, my times are in thy hand. My times are in your hand. So it's all under God's control. So when I, when I get frustrated, huh, and I think the old way, that I'm mad about the way things are, what I'm really saying is, God, I'm mad at the way you've let this come into my life. I'm very unhappy with what you've done to me. And we don't come out and say that, but that's what our frustration says to God. I'm sure, Brother Quitter, you deal with this with missionaries on deputation. It's a process. It's not about raising support. I mean, it is, but it's about God preparing the missionary for the work he has for them. Am I right? God's got, and sometimes they, they, they want to hurry the process up, and God's not in a hurry. God's never in a hurry. Have you noticed that? I'm in a hurry. But God never is. But he's always right on time. Always. When you perform, that means you've conformed. You've become like the other Christians but you've never been transformed. You've never been changed. And so you go through the outward motions, but you really don't believe it. God's not looking for imitators or conformers. He's looking for us to be transformed by His power. His power at work in us. In us. And listen, it's just a matter of acknowledging his, that you need His help. Don't, don't take off and say, I know how to do this. I, I got this. No, 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 no. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. You'll fall flat on your face. Oh, you may make it a day. You may get through a day and say, hey, all right, I, I made that day. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're heading for disaster. I, I'm, I, I've seen it. Trust me. I, I know that, that, that that's what takes place. And so I, through the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the flesh. And that's when I become dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. How, how many times is it just the opposite for us? Isn't it? You, you'll sit, even tonight, some of you sit, and you know, you're, you're, you're battling 
to stay awake. You're, huh? But boy, you know what's amazing? We'll have amen and the closing song. Man, we getting anything to eat tonight? Pizza? Ice cream? Huh? And man, all of a sudden, we're wide awake and alert ready to go. Man, why are we so alive to the things of the world and we seem to be so dead to the things of God? I want it to be the other way around. I want to be alive to the things of God and they say amen and let's sing the closing song. And you say, oh man, is it over already? Can't we, can't we have another service? Yeah, you don't want that, do you? Amen. You know? I want to be dead indeed into sin, but alive unto God. Spirituality, listen, is when you're allowing Christ to live through you. I know. It's, it's a lot easier. And for years I was on this. Listen, for years it was, you just tell me what to do. Okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. Spiritual. I mean, I, I, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a I like, a, I like a one, two, three, four, boom, let's do it. I, I like that kind of stuff. Spirituality is not like that. There's no formula. The formula is, die to me, let Christ live through me. That's spirituality. Okay? And that's, that's changing your thinking. Show fidelity, show righteousness. Spirituality is not an imitation. And let me give you number four. Spirituality does not work its way in, it works its way out. Spirituality doesn't work its way in, it works its way out. It works its way from the inside to the outside. Salvation in the Christian life always begins with your heart. I don't I I, I get so grieved. There, there's been, I think, twice now that I have in in uh, looking on the television, going through channels caught the uh, end of Mr. Osteen out in Texas talking about the positive message and you know the, the good things and they always cut away at the end of the broadcast and it's just him looking in the camera and he said you know that we believe the most important thing in your life is for you to be born again and if you've ever been born again I just want you to pray this prayer with me and he just says a prayer and has people repeat the prayer and, and just he says now we believe you prayed that prayer you've been born again my friend, born again isn't from praying a prayer. Born again is from believing in your heart. See, and you've got to understand that you're a sinner who needs a Savior. And that you're a sinner on your way to hell. And that, that listen, you don't, you don't make and cut any deals with God. You are coming at His mercy and begging Him to save your soul. That's salvation. But with uh, Romans 10, 9, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? And uh, years ago I told you we had a, we had a, we would do a uh, fundraiser. Andy, remember this? We did a fundraiser for teenagers. We did a big car wash. We did a sponsored car wash. We would go, teens would go to businesses and say, we're going to wash cars. How much money will you give me per car? They did a penny a car, maybe a dime a car, wherever it would be. And uh, we'd have the whole church come out on a Saturday at a shopping center. We had three lines for cars to come through, washers, rinsers, dryers. We had a tent set up with baked goods under it and drinks, and they'd come in and, and buy stuff. Everything that was just, that was free to them. They didn't have to pay a dime if they didn't want to because we were getting paid for businesses who were sponsoring the car wash. Now, we had a donation jar, and people would put money in, but we would do, we would do usually around somewhere between five and 600 cars on a Saturday and, and raise money for the teenagers. And <clears throat> we would always have the, the uh, soul winners there, and, and uh, when folks get out of their car, we'd take their car through the, through the line for them, and they'd get to stand out there. While they're standing out there eating a cookie or getting something to drink, we had soul winners there to give them the gospel, try to lead them to Christ. We got the idea from a church that had done this in California, and they sent us a, a video. And the video went, went basically, the, the video they showed us was a guy had the microphone and the camera, and 
the people would stop in the car, and he'd walk over, and he'd say, hi, good to have you here at the car wash today. And, and she's in the car now behind the steering wheel. And he'd say, let me ask you a question. You know, you, you believe in God? Yes? You believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Well, congratulations. You're a candidate for salvation. You know, the Bible says Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And then if you'll trust him as your Savior, you could have eternal life in heaven. Why don't, you, why don't we bow our heads and we'll pray right now. And about his head, and he'd lead him in a prayer, and lead him in a prayer, and he'd say, congratulations, you just got saved. And I think the people behind the wheel were saying, what? <laughs> what did I just do? I watched that, and I just got grieved at my heart. Man, the, the last thing I want to do, I'm not making it hard for anybody to get saved, but I sure don't want somebody to think they're saved when they're not saved. You know, it's hard to undo that. When someone thinks, how many times have I been through the plan of salvation with someone more than I care to think? When I get through and they say, oh, I did that. But when I ask you if you knew for sure if you died, you'd go to heaven, you said no. You had no assurance at all. I mean, you did that. You see, I, I, I want them to be able to know from their heart that they have received Christ their Savior and that they, they are saved. Spirituality then will work its way out. If it's not in your heart, listen carefully, if it's not in your heart, you'll never be consistent in your life you'll be on the roller coaster because you're trying to do it yourself you're trying to perform you don't work it in it works its way out it works its way out when you truly experience the grace of God in your heart you'll be willing and able to separate from the world and live in holiness before God God has cleansed my heart from sin he cleansed my heart from impurity. And guess what? That's got to show up out here sometime. It works its way out. You can't keep it in. It will eventually come out. Paul and Silas at midnight singing and praying to God. Not complaining, griping. They'd been beaten and they'd been put in jail. For what? Preaching the gospel. By the way, in Philippi, remember, remember the, 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 the vision? Come help us. You think Paul ever laid there and thought, what was I seeing? This isn't what I signed up for. If this is come help us, I'm going the other direction. I missed something. Too many anchovies on my pizza. But you know, he's there and... The jailer, when he hears this, by the way, visible as well as verbal, and he comes in and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You ever have anybody observe you and listen to you and watch you and then come up to you and say, I sure like to have what you have? Hmm? It doesn't happen very often, does it? It happened to us one time. That was back in college. We were in Hammond, Indiana, and we lived in a little garage. That's what it was. The guy was a contractor. He built a garage, and he decided not to use it as a garage, and he put a, put a regular door on it and a door in the front and the back and made it into a little one-bedroom apartment. We paid, get ready for this, we paid $195 a month including utilities. And that was, by the way, that wasn't normal. Most of the people lived out in the nicer area. We lived right in, this was right in Hammond. And most of them lived out near the college were paying 350 375 a month. But the fellow who rented the apartment to us and We were ready to leave, graduated, packing up, and he came over, and he just said, I don't know how you can be so happy and have so little. And basically, he, he said the words, I'd like to have what you have. And before we left town, we got to see he and his wife both accept Christ as their Savior. And, and, and they started attending First Baptist of Hammond. It doesn't happen very often. 
sad to say. But that's what adorning the gospel can do. Let me ask you a question. Does your life make anybody thirsty to become a Christian? Does your life make anyone thirsty to become a Christian? You know, if you're, if you're, if you're really parched and you're really thirsty and you're, you're, someone says, man, you, you look like you really use a, a good cold drink. You say, man, I really am. I'm really thirsty. And they say, well, I've got some nice cool water here. Crystal clear, it's 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 pure, and and I like to give some water. And they come and they bring the glass back, and it's got dirt in it, and it's got grease smudges around the top. So here's some good water. You might say, I think I'll wait till I get home. I don't think I want to drink out of that. You'd pass. Why? You don't just want clean water. You like a clean glass. You'd like the clean vessel that it comes in. God wants to get the water of life to a lost and dying world. But when we bring it to them in a dirty, filthy vessel, they look and say, no thanks. No thanks. God wants that vessel to be clean. So the water we bring them will be appealing. And they want to drink. Let's adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you for the plainness of the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for the attention of everyone tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts about adorning the gospel. But Lord, we'd so live that others could see Christ in us. Lord, I pray tonight that if any in this room have been performing, they've never been transformed. They're trying to do it themselves. They're trying to live the Christian life in their own strength. Lord, I pray that they would truly come to know you as their Savior tonight. And believe from their heart in Jesus Christ. And allow you to change their life. Lord, those of us who know you as our Savior, may we adorn the doctrine. May we so live that others would desire the gospel that we're living. May our message be verbal and may it be visible. For others to see. May our lives and the way we live for thee make it more attractive to others to come to Christ. And speak to our hearts tonight. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. I wonder if there's anyone here tonight who would say, Preacher, I'm not sure that I'm saved. Maybe, maybe you're a young person and it's because mom and dad always told you you got saved. But you know in your heart it's not true. You know in your heart that you're trying to perform. You're trying to make it look good. But you have no desire for the things of God whatsoever. Oh, I beg you, don't, don't, don't play that game. Let Christ come into your heart. Trust Him as your Savior from your heart. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm struggling about this matter of salvation. I'm not sure that I'm truly saved. Would you pray for me? I'm not going to embarrass you. You know better than that. But I'll pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and say, I think that might be me, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. I think it might be me. I'm not sure whether I'm truly saved. Okay. I wonder how many folks here this evening would say, Pastor, I want to adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. I want my message to be verbal and I want it to be visible. I want to show faithfulness. I want to show the righteousness. I want to do what you spoke of this evening. I don't want to perform. I want to be transformed. 
I realize that spirituality is yielding to Christ and letting him live through me. And Pastor, that's what I desire for my life. God spoke to me this evening to pray for me. If you slip your hand up, Christian. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hands all across the building. God bless you. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. If God has dealt with your heart tonight. Respond to him. Do what he's telling you to do. Heavenly Father, thank you for dealing with our hearts tonight. Thank you for decisions that have been made here in the hearts of people. And Lord, as you have spoken to us, now I pray we'll respond to you. That your will will be done in these next few moments. Hear our prayer. Change our lives. And we'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. She begins to play, Brother Bob will sing. God has spoken to your heart tonight. You respond to him. Oh, to Jesus That's right. I surrender. All oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all oh to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all oh to Jesus I surrender Humbly at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all, I surrender all. Oh, to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine, let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine, I surrender surrender all, oh, to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, oh, all oh, to Jesus, I surrender, Lord, I give myself to thee, fill me with thy love and power, let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Put this way for a minute. I remember listening to first time I heard it, I don't know if it's original with him or not, was Dr. Curtis Hudson talking about a, a little boy talking to his dad. And he looked at his dad, he said, uh, Dad, how tall am I? And the boy said, and Dad said, well, I don't know. Well, how tall do you think? And Dad said, well, I guess you're probably, oh, three and a half feet tall. Well, the boy said, okay. He said, how tall are you? And Dad said, I'm six feet tall said, well, how tall is Jesus? Dad said, I don't know how tall Jesus is. Nobody knows how tall Jesus is. He said, well, do you think Jesus is as tall as you? You know, you want to do when kids start asking much questions. You just want to get it over with. So he says, yeah, I, Jesus is probably as tall as I am. And the little boy was quiet for a minute. Then he said, well, then, Dad, if Jesus lives in me, he'd stick out, wouldn't he? <laughs> and makes a good point, doesn't he? If Christ lives in us, he ought to stick out. Let's let him stick out this week. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for another wonderful Sunday in the house of God with the people of God. 
thank you for your goodness and for decisions that have been made for thee this evening and this morning. And Father, as we leave this place tonight, make us mindful you go with us from this place. Lord, our desire is to please you, that give you glory this week, that we'll adorn the doctrine of God our Savior, that we'll pray as we ought to pray, walk with you as we ought to walk with you. May you live through us, and may you use us to point others to Jesus this week. We love you. We thank you that we're your children and you're our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Ladies, don't forget your sign-up sheet uh, down there, all right? Let's sing it together. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go. For it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.